Binance is one of the easiest and safest ways to buy cryptocurrencies. If you're new to crypto and want to get your feet wet and buy some Ethereum, Bitcoin or other altcoins, then Binance may be a great option for you. I will show you step by step how to buy Ethereum on Binance in this beginner friendly tutorial. Then later in the video, I will guide you through the more advanced ways of buying your crypto. It is a little bit more difficult but is well worth your time mastering because they have much lower trading fees and will save you a lot of money in the long run. I have also made a free custom crypto trading calculator for you which will help keep track of your investments and trading profits. And I will show you how to get access to this later on in the video so make sure to stick with me to the end. But for now, let's get into it. First, click on the link in the description or type this into your browser. It will take you to the correct Binance sign up page to get you started if you don't have an account yet. And from here, you just have to enter in your email, password, then click create account. Pull this slider to the correct position. Now get your verification code from your email and you're all set. Your account is ready to go. And now let's go to their homepage by clicking on go to dashboard. Next, we need to secure our account by adding two factor authentication. And I'm going to use Google verification instead of the phone verification here. Click on that. And now we just follow the steps provided by Binance. Either download the app from the App Store or Google Play. And now we scan the QR code. Click next. Click next again. Now click here to get the code. So it will be sent to your email address. Type that code in from your email. And then type in your new code from your Google authentication. And click submit. And that's it, it has been done successfully. So now that our account has been set up successfully, we're ready to go and purchase our Ethereum. And there are two ways of doing this, the easier way, which has higher fees, or the harder way, which has less fees. So I'll show you the first way, which is the easier way, and that is using your credit or debit card. And you can do this by going to buy crypto and click on credit slash debit card. It'll bring you to this page where you can input the currency that you have and the currency that you wanna buy. So if I have $100 and I want to buy Ethereum, I would click on that and type in ETH or Ethereum and click there. And when you press continue, it's gonna make you verify your account first. You need to provide your personal information like your passport or bank account details in order to buy any cryptocurrency with your fiat currency. Click on continue. You have to verify your account here. Click on verify now and I'll go to the verification center. Now we pick a residential country here and click on verify now. Put your personal information in and there it is, my account has been verified to the basic level. But you can see here, depending on what country you're from, different levels allow you to buy a different amount of crypto. So for example, with this one, if you just go on the basic, you're only allowed to buy $300 lifetime. So if you want any more than that, you'll need to verify to the next level, which will require government ID and also to verify your face. So it just depends on how much you need to buy and what country you're from. But you can just follow this step and it'll be very easy. Here's a quick question for you. What percentage of your portfolio do you hold in Ethereum and why? Let me know in the comments section below. So now let's go back to our credit debit card payment method again. Now we can reselect the amount we want and choose the crypto we want to buy, which in this case is Ethereum and click on continue, add your card and click on continue once you're happy with everything. So we can see how quick and easy this method is. However, the negative of using this method is that you have to pay a much higher fee. Binance would charge you 3.5% for transactions made with a debit or credit card. This second method is where you can lower your fees down to as low as 0.075 of a percent. This is about four times cheaper than using your credit card. So it's worth doing if you're buying a large amount. But if you're only buying $100 or $200, it won't really make a big difference for you. Do you like the level of detail I'm providing in my Binance tutorial so far? If yes, make sure to let me know by liking my video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on high quality content that I'll be releasing every single week. So this second method now will require you to use your bank deposit. And you can see here, there's no fees involved using this method. You just pick the currency you wanna use and click on continue. So Binance will then provide you with their bank details like the account number and sort code and you'll have to log in to your own banking application and send the correct amount to Binance. And after your transfer has been finalized by your bank, you'll then have your balance in your Binance account ready to purchase your crypto asset. 
So this is how we're able to get lower fees, is that we're depositing our money from our bank account into Binance. But you can see the negative of this method is that it's gonna take more time for your bank transfer to be approved. But once it's approved, we'll go to trade and click on convert. This is the easiest way to buy your Ethereum. So now we can choose the currency that we want to buy and the currency that we want to sell. So in this case, I have BUSD, so I'm gonna sell that. And I want to buy Ethereum. And now we enter in the amount we want and then click on preview. And this shows you the Ethereum price for one US dollars and how much Ethereum you actually receive. If you're happy with everything, click on refresh and then click on convert. Or if you want to buy a certain amount of Ethereum and you don't care how many dollars that is, you can always go to Ethereum and type in the amount you want also and click on preview conversions. And then the calculation will tell you how much US dollars you'll spend. And if you want my free custom crypto trading calculator, then just go to this link in the description below to get access to that. There is a slightly more complicated and advanced way of doing it. But if you're an advanced trader or you want to preset some orders at a lower level or some sell orders at a higher level, then you'll need to do it this way. So we'll go to trade and click on advanced. It'll bring you to this page here. On first sight, it may look a bit complicated with all the moving figures and charts here, but trust me, once you get used to it, this is much better as you have more control on when you want to buy your asset and where you want to buy it. And in this tutorial, I'll only show you the simple market buy method, but if you want a full tutorial on how to use this advanced trading platform, then I have a video here on my channel that you can check out. Anyway, for now, we want to buy Ethereum, right? So we want to go click up here and type in ETH, you'll see all the different trading pairs with Ethereum. So right now I have the BUSD, I have the equivalent of the US dollar, so I'm gonna click on that pair to trade. Now we can see on the right hand side, you either have a buy order or a sell order. And you have three different types of order method, the limit, market, and stop limit. So a limit is where you put in a price that you're happy to buy Ethereum with. Maybe it's at $2,000 for example. And then you can enter in the amount you want to buy or in terms of percentage and you can click on buy ETH when you're ready and happy to go and that'll put in an order for you at that level. So if Ethereum drops down to that level, it'll automatically buy for you. But for this tutorial, we're just using the market and market is essentially the same as going to your trade and in the convert section like we did previously. But this is a more complicated version, but you can wait till when the the price goes down to a certain level and you actually know what level you're buying it at. So here you can see if we press the buy button for an amount that we want, let's say $100, you know that we're gonna be buying it at $2,653.96. Yeah, the price moves really quick. So it's just essentially gonna take the closest value that's been put on the market here that you'll purchase. And once you've successfully purchased, it'll show you the available balance here. So now that you've purchased your Ethereum, you may want to store it in a safe place. So if you keep your Ethereum on Binance, you don't actually have custody to your coins. It's on the Binance wallet and it can be hacked by others and can disappear from Binance if that ever happens. So what I recommend you do as a minimum is put it on your own wallet address. And you can do this with a mobile wallet like Trust Wallet. This is free and is Binance official wallet. So you can download it from the App Store or Google Play and install that there. There are other mobile wallets you can use also and I've also made a video recommending the best ones. So you can check that out too. But what I do with my portfolio is I use a hardware wallet. So these are better than mobile wallets as it's a physical wallet where you have a USB stick which holds the key and the wallets to your crypto assets. This means that when the USB is unplugged, it is not connected to the internet and it cannot be hacked unless they have your key phrase. Whereas a mobile wallet like Trust Wallet is always on your phone and connected to the internet, so there's more chance of getting hacked. But a hardware wallet can cost somewhere around $100. So if you're only investing $100 or $200, it may not be worth buying a hardware wallet. But this is all essentially up to you to decide which option you want to go with. And I have a more in-depth video on both the hardware wallet and the mobile wallet. But I really recommend you use one of these two methods of storing your crypto and don't leave it on an exchange unless you're trading it constantly. If you're ready to proceed with Binance and want to learn the next step to take, then go to this video. However, if you're not happy with Binance and want an alternative, then this is my recommendation. So check it out and I'll see you over there.